All right, so very good afternoon to all of you, uh, cherished viewers of Hot Issues, and welcome to another exciting edition of Hot Issues. So, Ghana has been battling with the infestation of uh, fall armyworms. Now, we see that it's affected some 48,000 hectares of maize. And I believe you and I do know the impact this would have on our food security, particularly uh, many of us who are lovers of the end product of maize. This afternoon on Hot Issues, we're going to be finding out how we can deal with infestation of fall armyworms, what are the best control and management mechanisms? I am Winston Amwa, and this is Hot Issues. After this break, I'll be introducing my guest who has all the expertise in dealing with this problem. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, so welcome back from that short break and thanks for staying with us. Now, my guest for this afternoon is a former Deputy Minister of uh, Food and Agriculture in charge of special programs. He's also a former country representative of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization in Liberia, Rwanda. And of course, he's also uh, the consultant for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in controlling, in developing control and management you know, mechanisms for fall armyworms. My guest this afternoon hot issues is Dr. Winfred Neil Kahaman. Doc, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. So how do these armyworms get into Ghana in the first place? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the fall armyworm, mm -hmm. as it's known in where it originally exists, in the Americas in general, it's, it's, it's a pest that had been in those areas for more than 100 years. Uh. Southern part of the United States, the whole of Central America, goes all the way down to Brazil, to Argentina. So it's been there for a very long time. Mm. For the past year or two, we have not, until, until the past year or two, we've not known it in Africa. Mm. And suddenly it shows up in Sao Tome and Principe. Nigeria recorded it. We heard about it in Togo, in Benin, and then in Ghana. Mm. And we heard about other infestations starting from Southern Africa, where devastations were even worse than here. Yes, but how did they get into Africa? So the question is, we, we know that this is a pest that could travel about 2,000 kilometers in a year. Mm. In a but year? In a year. Okay. Roughly it's estimated at about 100 kilometers in a day, the adult pest. Uh -huh. The adult is a moth, uh, what you call a butterfly, to the layman, that lays the egg that hatch into this caterpillar we call the worm or the army worm. It travels that fast. But we're not sure and we don't think that on its own accord, it could have come and spread this fast mm -hmm. across the continent, across the, the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, into this part of the world to cause this havoc. So we suspect that it might have come with importation of maize mm. or some other products because it's a pest of many um, cereals and some other crops, food mm. crops, mm. as well as other cash crops. Could we have prevented it? Yes, Africa could have, um, or let me put it this way, we could have been more alert and vigilant to keep it under check immediately it was detected. That's in the mean, first place, mm -hmm. in the right. first place, if it came by importation, then it means our quarantine systems have not worked. From one country to the other. It's most likely it came through importation based on the most, most likely. Given. Yes. And our quarantine system, we should be more vigilant. We should have early warning systems in place. We should have the capacity in terms of the personnel, institutions, and all that it takes to be able to detect immediately you have such pests coming into your territory. But once you detect it, you should have the wherewithal to be able to curb it, to nip it in the bud that you don't wait for it to um, start spreading before you do a firefighting. I've said it in some other program, a lot of what Africa was doing was doing firefighting with any kind of pesticide they can lay hands on 
throw it on it and let's see if it works. Oh. So we could have prevented that or we could have reduced the risk or the threat that we face now from this fall army worm. And you say we're firefighting? I call it firefighting because when, without getting the proper advice, you, whatever you find, you just try it on. In your house, if fire outbreak comes, at times we even forget that water may cause more ha havoc by throwing water on the fire that is burning. Mm. And so in our desperation, we do anything, hoping that that will stop it. We may not have the right fire extinguishers to check so that's why I call it firefighting. Fire fight. We'll get back to how we're dealing with it, but let's get to the prevention bit. So we couldn't have prevented it from entering the country. We could have. We could have. By what way? The job of any quarantine service mm -hmm. in any country is to be able to detect that an invasive species is coming to your territory. Mm. So... The first country where this occurred, if there are quarantine systems and what we call the biosecurity systems in place were working, then they could have kept it there, nip it in the bud, and the rest of Africa wouldn't have to suffer. Okay, so let's bring it down to the Ghanaian, I mean the ordinary Ghanaian. Our quarantine system should have, I, I mean, detected this. We're importing maize into the country how could we have detected that the maize we're importing here was infested by army worms? Well, the moment you have the pest already in the neighboring country before it gets to you, then it really doesn't matter. It is not so much the weakness in your quarantine yeah. system because it's a pest that is flying on its own. The adult is flying 100 kilometers in a night. So within a short time, it covers your entire country. But that is not to say that there's no need for us to be vigilant about our quarantine system. A quarantine system should have a surveillance system in place. You do proper monitoring on a regular basis. You depend on information that comes from your neighbors uh -huh. and from other, your trading partners. Uh -huh. If you're going to import maize from Brazil, from South America, from any part into Africa or into Ghana, you need information about what are the possible pests that could be imported accidentally. You need to get information in advance about that person, how they're dealing with it there. If we have all these systems in place, we should be able, the moment it comes and we suspect that, then we will not even have done the wrong identification that was done. Because we, are, we have a good early system, early warning system in place mm. that helps us to nip it in the back. How can so, we, yeah, so go ahead, make the point. So we, we I'm afraid to say that um, Ghana and the rest of Africa, this is a wake-up call for us to check again because we have not paid much attention to effective quarantine systems, surveillance, uh, monitoring, early warning system to be put in place. Okay. How can we wrongly identify it? It calls for a specialist to be able to say this fall army worm it's not the same as the African army worm. Mm. Listen very carefully because it can be confusing. Mm -hmm. There are different species of army worms. If I go a little bit deeper, this the fall army worm is what we call Spodoptera frugipeda. I'm sure it would make do with the fall army worms. <laughs> no, I'm giving you that yeah. difference because it is similar to the African army worm which we have lived with for centuries. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't know that there is this difference, you would have assumed that this is just one of those. Then the caterpillar could also be mistaken for the ordinary person for maize stem borers, for instance, rice stem borers. They've been in the system for a long time. So people see it and they assume, oh, this, we know it. This year it looks like it's coming more. Let's use the usual pesticide we've been using to control it and let's try and then it didn't work. Then they said, oh, we have something um, different. So what is it? Then experts come in. By the time the experts come in, um, in this case, it was a bit late because it spread very fast. The female of this 
uh, pets, the adult female, mm -hmm. can lay up to 2,000 eggs. Really? In just about two, three weeks. Hmm. Okay? If you don't stop the adult from laying, it means that each adult could contribute up to 2,000 young ones. Yes, not all the young ones will develop to, 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 to be adults, but before even they are destroyed by other factors, they already would have started feeding on their host plant, the plants, either maize or rice, sorghum or millet. These are all potential host plants of the fall armyworm. So it is, it is important that since we miss the first part of proper um, building on the formation that comes from where the maize has come from or any imports was coming from, we should get the experts to help us train our people or help us do the proper But how come those experts didn't identify it? Because we, we have them, don't we? The experts couldn't. I mean, if, if, if you have an expert in a research center, that is far from um, a quarantine service at the border somewhere. Um, the nature of their work does not even, uh, they are designed in a way that they don't work in, in tandem with these aspects. And yes, that is a shortfall in our system in itself. It mm. exposes us to that. But by the time the experts are called in, to check and uh, be sure what is this thing we're talking about, um, it's a bit late. And that's what happened here in Ghana. That's what happened in many of the countries for which um, I, I work. Mm. Mm. You know. So uh, the, the fall armyworms, which you know, plants do they attack, for instance? The common ones, mm -hmm. the cereals, as I said, maize, rice, cotton, vegetables, tomatoes, and other vegetables. But it has preference. Its preference is the cereals, maize or rice. Maize or rice because we have two strains of this species that attack cereals and other crops. The two strains, one is known as the maize strain and the other as the rice strain. Both have been identified in Ghana. Both are in Ghana? Yes, they are in Ghana. I thought we only had that of the maize here. No, we have both. They occur in different <coughs> proportions. Mm. The rice strain will attack more than maize. The, the rice will attack more rice, and the maize will attack more than maize. But even on the maize field, you may get strains that are also rice strains. So we have these two. No, no but Doc, hold on one minute. So. So far, we've been talking about 48,000 hectares of maize. Yes. What of the rice? Do we know how many hectares they've attacked, I mean, attacked? Not, not yet. But they're in Ghana. Because, because, yeah, they're in Ghana. And once they come to Ghana, they definitely would look for the rice and attack. That is part, that is part of the program that this tax force is following to ensure that at least when it comes to rice, we will do a better job. Because as it moves further, an indication we've, done, we've not done a better job with the with maize. Yeah, because we were late in, 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 in coming in with our interventions. We were late. We got to face it. Whatever the reasons are, they are there. But we were late. Both the technical people, those who are informing government, they didn't they didn't do a good job. So there are lessons to learn. Thank God it's for a season. I'm told that. The government program on planting for food mm. and, and, and jobs is in its pilot phase. Mm -hmm. The target is for five million farmers, and we started. We start. We are starting with two hundred thousand. That in itself is a huge figure, mm. but compared to the target, thank God that I don't know if I should say thank God that we are yet at the pilot phase, and that is when we have we are learning from all the mistakes that we could have corrected right from you the believe outset. the technical guys i mean the technocrats have misinformed and misled the minister i i want to believe so because i don't expect a minister to
to be the technician to be out there and get, get the accurate figures in the field. It will depend on the, the staff out there who are supposed to have the experience to do the work and come um, with the right information. But for some reason, they also missed it and handle issues of business as usual. Mm. And so that could be, most likely be there. I, I want to believe that's what happened. Because if I was in the shoes of the minister, maybe because of my training as an entomologist, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want, when I hear things, to check. But we have dis different disciplines, and we don't expect us to have that in-depth knowledge in every area. Okay. Of, you so, know. so We'll go for a short break. When we return, we'll find out how to deal with, you know, fall armyworms. How do we ensure that we're able to control and manage them? Can we get them out of the system totally? These are questions that, you know, we'll be asking Dr. Winfred Neil Kai Hammond after the short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, so welcome back from that short break, and thanks for staying with us. This is Hot Issues, and today we're focusing on how we can control and manage the fall armyworms that has you know, invaded Ghana and so far have infested 48,000 hectares of maize. My guest this afternoon is Dr. Winfred Neil Kai Hamad, who's an entomologist, a former deputy, uh, you know, agri minister in charge of special programs. So, Doc, globally, how do you deal with fall armyworms? The best practice. The best practice, you go back to where it came from and look at what they have done to keep it under control. Mm -hmm. In those countries where fall armyworm has been a problem over the years, they've been able to control it using natural or beneficial agents, what we call biological control. Explain further. Biological control is the use of one species of animal against the other. Mm -hmm. There are beneficial agents, we call them, or species that can feed very well up to 80% of the eggs that is produced by the fall armyworm. We call them the trichogramma species. So they build their populations and they release them out there. They're also in the natural. Mm -hmm. So you do everything to protect them that they'll be able to do a good job on this pest. They also use organic or safe pesticides. Some are using plant-based extracts like the neem. We have some that are using what we call some type of sugars. Mm. Maltodextrin, for instance, organic pesticides, which it's, it has, the mode of action is just to block the sparkles of the insects in a way that they don't, they are not able to, to breathe well and they suffocate them and they die. These are known to have zero toxicity effect on the environment. Mm. Then, of course, the use of what we call um, bacteria you will hear about Bt. Mm -hmm. They call it uh, bacterius, uh, bact uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. Bacillus thuringiensis comes in different forms, um, under different trade names. I wouldn't want to go into details. But these are preferred in those countries because they are aware that a synthetic pesticide creates a lot of havoc to the environment. Apart from that, the fall armyworm is one of the insect species that are good at developing resistance against these types of pesticides. Mm. So you spray one, two, by the third time, you spray it and it's like shooting somebody a bullet and it's looking you in the face. Mm. And you know you are in trouble because the ammunition you have is not working. Okay. And that is what they have done, combining all these in an integrated manner, what you call integrated pest control uh, or management, to be able to manipulate the environment to the advantage and um, get the fall armyworm under control. In Ghana, in Africa, 
out of panic, out of desperation, whatever pesticide people found around, they jump on it and no, so hold spread on. it. In Ghana, how are we fighting it? We started by mopping up any pesticide. Of course, pesticides that the Environmental Protection Agency, for instance, has cleared that is good to control other pests. We don't have anything certified for fall armyworm in Ghana. How come? No, because we've never had the problem. Yes, but, I mean, Doc, once you have the problem, you need to find out the best way of dealing with the problem. Yes, so we how come we're just going for any pesticide when there are pesticides that can fight this army, uh, the, these fall armyworms? Yes, we fall on pesticides that we think we have used against other maize pests because that is what is available in the system. And these are supposed to be technical men advising that we use these things? The farmer doesn't, would not even wait for you to... To advise, they would follow whatever. But of course, what we are coming. Yes, there's a committee. The in committee, place. and when the committee came in, what have they done differently? Yes, the committee came and selected a group of pesticides. Uh -huh. The preference for the committee would have been to use the organic or the biopesticides, which are very safe and which makes it difficult for the pest to develop resistance. Safe to the environment, difficult for the pest to develop resistance. Two qualities that we recommended we should follow through. However, we did not have more of those that would protect our environment and that will make it difficult. So no, I see, we, we did not have those in the country. In the country. Can't we buy them? You buy them, it takes with all the fast tracking of clearance and everything, it takes some time before you get them into the country. How long would it take it to get into the country? Oh, it depends on what you're dealing with. Some could take two weeks, some could take a month, some even more. Mm. So the first phase, quickly, when the minister promised that we're going to send this out there to farmers out there, based on the area we thought was infested, we did send. So, so I mean, let's be frank about this. Yeah. The pesticides that we sent in dealing with fall armyworms, yes are not those pesticides that can effectively deal with them. Most of them can, but very soon we may find that. You may hear reports that, ah, I sprayed it, it didn't work. I sprayed it, it didn't work. Part of it is because they spray it at the wrong time. Secondly? Secondly, it's maybe they, it came with already the genes that have developed resistance to this pesticide. And thirdly, also because of the way they're spraying. But that goes to show if they've developed resistance, it means then that we're unable But we to will not be able to know until you do it. Yes, but so what it means is that these pesticides are not the ones can, that can effectively deal with them. Because there in are the long like, run. In the long run, because there are others, like you say, which would ensure that uh, you know, the fall armyworms do not develop resistance. Yes. Great. Or, or, or if they're going to do that, then it will take quite a long while. But even then, what the committee recommended was to have different combinations of pesticides. So why didn't we do it? We recommended and sent it out there. And we recommended to have spray gangs that we train to be able to do the right thing. Unfortunately, farmers who have invested so much and rightfully so, needed answers immediately, went and said, this first time was sent to us, let's have it, we do our thing. A lot of them grabbed the stuff, and they came back they with the feedback. They grabbed stuff that were provided for them. For, the, for them. By the ministry. By the ministry. So the ministry is providing them with the, these stuff that they are using. Yes, but, but would not have the patience to wait to have the spray gangs in place, well trained to guide them and do this spraying. Mm -hmm. So. It's, it's, it's an exercise that we all learned lessons from. I believe the farmers themselves learned the lessons from because mm -hmm. they come back to tell you, this thing didn't work. So what happened? And then you try to find out what really happened. But let me say, whatever pesticides you're going to apply, you first need to understand that the most effective stage that you can knock off fall army well, it's during the first what we call the first stage after hatching from the egg, mm. first or second stage. The first stage is very difficult to see. 
but you can use the symptoms it does on the leaf what we will call the window panes it scrapes off the chlorophyll like green coloring matter and it leaves a white patch on the leaves and I wish I have something to demonstrate to show that but this is the material we are taking the committee by the way is moving to the field mm. to everywhere across the country starting Monday we're going with all these kind of materials we're going with the lessons we've learned from the emergency operations we you're need. now going to show them no we have people who had gone out they have not been, it has not been effective Yes, that's the point I was making. It's yes, not effective. It's not effective. Yes. So we, 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 want to, we want to improve on what has not worked. Mm. In our desperation, what we have done, we want to improve on what has not worked. And I know when we want quick answers, you know, we wish that um, the first thing we tried worked. Mm. We were not doing try and error. We were hoping that this product will be used rightly, just first, second, third time, but we know and we have recommended giving a chart that combine this group with that because you have what we call the mode of action of pesticides. Mm -hmm. If the insects that develop resistance is known or get used to the same type of pesticide with the same mode of action, that helps it to develop resistance quickly. So we said confuse the mechanisms for that, use different type of pesticides that even if it's synthetic, but falls within the category that as approved by WHO, World Health Organization or FAO, you could still use that, combine it with another type. Uh -huh. These things I'm saying are very important. Okay. It may look laborious and tedious, but if you want to have effective impact, you've got to stick to them. You can't do business as usual, just spray one thing and get lost. So it can't work. All the pesticides that can effectively deal with the fall, army worms have we imported them well the government does not import government deal with with the private sector mm -hmm. have to partner with private sector on that and a lot of them are putting their second um, importation we, we took everything from the shelf everything from the shelf literally because people came and we said look this is all we are take it we will even take our money later that's how good and and that the, the the good will that we had from even the private sector to the so, so dealers. we're waiting for them to get us the correct ones so now we have come with recommendations mm -hmm. for what we think will do the job but even that let me go quickly to say we will not depend forever on that because we want to be sure that this will not kill the natural enemies those natural enemies that i mentioned in brazil and in, in mm -hmm. americas we also have natural enemies locally Mm -hmm. that are now getting used to this fall armyworm to put them on the check. We have to be aware that we create the environment that will help these natural enemies to multiply to be able to do effective natural control. How soon can we deal with this, uh, deal with the fall armyworms? How soon? Mm -hmm. I will disappoint you. Tell me. I don't think that the season in which we are we can say that we would eradicate fall armyworm. We can't in this season. We can never eradicate fall armyworm in the first place. Really? We can bring fall armyworm under control to the point that its presence does not threaten our food security. That is the goal, that is the target. But so you can never eradicate a pest of this nature anymore. Would it be important to plant now if you haven't started already? Yes, I think I heard you saying somewhere that you, you were planning to go into growing, so you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Please go ahead, but follow the advice to ensure that you get the right type of pesticide. You got to be able to also scout and determine when to apply the pesticide. If you do that, you have a very healthy crop. Dr. Winfred Newkai Hammond, thank you. Very much for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> Folks, that's all from us uh, this afternoon, Hot Issues. Thank you so much for being a part of us. My name is Winston Amwa. Uh, make sure you make a date with me on Monday on 3FM 92.7 from 5.55 a.m. to 10 a.m. on the morning show. Have a lovely weekend. We're out.